Hello everybody, we're going over Die Katana 2. If you missed last week's episode, go back and check it out. But here is an extremely quick recap of what happened last week. The party was formed and they head out to the Dungeon of Death. The party includes Cap, Half-Elf Scout, Myrmidon Monk, Female Warrior, Female Wizard, and Female Bishop. That's right, they don't actually have names, they're just based on their class and their gender. Before we break this down, did last week's episode make you want to check out the series so far after reading the first two books out of the five? I'm really liking this. You're starting to tell whether or not the characters have their own personalities, their own backstories. You're starting to learn more about the Dungeon of Death and the Fortress City where the adventurers stay. And I hope you guys continue this journey with me. Now let's just jump right into it. We start chapter six at the entrance of the dungeon. That's where we left off last week. Cap says he will make sure that he gets everyone back home safely. That's his job as the leader. They set up their front line and their back line. So here's that, you have your front line, back line. The back line is going to be female bishop, female wizard, and half-elf scout, while the Meridon monk, female warrior, and cap are all going to be the front line. We also find out that the Dungeon of Death changes terrain a lot, and then we also see that female warrior really likes to flirt with a uh, cap uh, so here's making him feel a little uncomfortable and flirting with them you know things people do when they're in the dungeon of death smart they also bring up that they need to make a map and originally myrmidon monk is the one who starts making the map but they realize female bishop is still a little out of her element. We find out last week that she was just an identifier because she messed up with goblins and she lacked confidence. So they gave her the map and said, could you do this? We really need you to do this. And she takes over the map, over the map making. We have her here making the map, going over how to make the map. That chapter comes to an end with more flirting from the female warrior. They're about to end up in a chamber filled with goblins. That's right, goblins. We now hit chapter 7, and it begins with female Bishop having a flashback of what happened to her last time she was fighting the goblins. If you've seen Goblin Slayer, you kind of know what happens. Now, it's not as graphic as it is in the other Goblin Slayer manga, so she might have got saved before it happened. She lets off a scream of terror and Cap starts slaying all the goblins to protect the back line. Won't let anyone get to female Bishop. And we got a little cool scene where they're just uh, blasting everybody. Those goblins are getting wrecked and they absolutely know that they're all goblins. Because the smell of them. We have Dai Katana slashing up the goblins protecting the back line. We have a little bit of step on me mommy action. Look at that right here. And then look at the face she gives right there after stepping on it. Oh, I'm blocking it. Look at the face. They find some treasure that's uh, disarmed by half elf scout. They kill all the goblins. Female bishop tries to apologize and all the guys in the group say there's nothing you need to apologize for. And female wizard looks after her the rest of the way. Here's a quick cut of that right here. We got that. They all check on her, make sure she's okay. They get super excited with getting all the treasure. It starts off with them getting ambushed by slimes. The party makes a quick work of five out of the six slimes and they start to wonder what happened to the sixth slime. After talking about how easy it was to get away, female warrior does get ambushed by some slimes right there and she's drowning the the slime is suffocating her and female bishop comes in clutch with incinerary fire magic blows up the uh slime saving her life and then female warrior apologizes to cap for letting him down and almost dying and he apologizes to her because he should have known and we get a little more interaction between the two 
starting to think there might be a little love story between the two. They say neither of them did anything wrong, no need to apologize, and Cap carries her the rest of the way out of the dungeon and into the town. We now start chapter nine, where they're heading back to the city, talking about what they should do. Uh, and they agree they should talk about everything tomorrow and set up all the identification of the items they got. And they head back to the Golden Knights. On their way back to town, they find out there is more people than there was previously, which we find out that though the knight that we met that broke up the fight in the first book his party has discovered a stairway to floor three, and this is why there is a party going on celebrating that they reached a new floor in the dungeon. And we find out that the Golden Knight at night has them in more uh, risque outfits. More risque outfits. Here is the party from the first one that discovered 4-3. Now they decide that they're going to stay there for the night and they need a room. They find out this is uh, what you can get for a room. That's right. The fruits of the waitresses. Yes. But there's like 500 gold for like the royal suite. There's 200 for the merchants. There's a whole bunch of scaling. But if you get the cot, it's only 10 uh, gold pieces, and if you get the stables, it's free. Now, I guess they only use gold pieces at this part of the story, because in later in Goblin Slayer, it's silver pieces. So this is a different economy than later on in the series and later on in the Four Cornered World system. Cab says, we'll take the stables and the girls can get the cots. So they set up for that, and we find out that the cots are actually overlooking the stable, and we get a little bit more flirting with female warrior and Cap while Cap is training, because he never wants what happened to female warrior, where he puts another member of his party in risk, so he's going to go out and train all night before going to bed so it never happens again. He has to take full responsibility of the group's uh, protection and their livelihood, so he's training even harder to make sure that happens. Chapter 10. This is the last chapter of book two. It starts with them fighting slimes, and they seem to really like Female Warrior, and they're constantly going after her, and they kill some undead kobolds, and we have this is the aftermath. She's just covered in slimes again. She hates slimes. And they start going. And we find out that they're helping these two girls. So these are the two girls that they're helping. And Cap tells them, you have to keep up. Don't get behind because it will be too dangerous. The manga cuts to a few hours earlier where the party and Cap are deciding who will handle all the finances for the party. And the group decides that it will be Cap. This makes it easier as in one person controls all the finances for the party. They play their version of poker and female wizard wins without having to redraw any cards and gets a fusion blast. I don't have that picture, but it's pretty fun scene. Then we have more flirting. Yes, there is a lot of flirting between these two in the book. It might be a romance and we just don't know it yet. We'll find out. I have my theories on who they might be. We'll, we'll hold the theories for now because this is not a theory channel, okay? We're breaking it down. We have female bishop identifying stuff and, they, and she finds out that all the items that they got is basically junk in the dungeon other than the gold they found in the chest. And then we also find out about the scruffy men. These are adventurers that are now basically bandits they'll kill other adventurers they kill other adventurers they take their stuff and they cut to a scene with female warrior saying they really do exist and she's like kind of shaking rocking back and forth in the scene and i think that might be what happened to her last adventuring party is 
because she came back and we met her when she's carrying five body bags. So possibly they could have killed them and who knows what they could have done to her. This is the world of Goblin Slayer, so it is pretty fucked up. We cut to those two girls we saw earlier yelling that they need help. And that is where it ends. That is all for the Biggles Bites. Find out next week what happens in book three. Bye!